Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Is It League EDH. And just like usual with the past few days, we'll just go ahead and jump right into the spoilers. We're on day seven, I believe. So there's not a whole lot of cards for today. So this is going to be super short, maybe like a 10, 15 minute video or something. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll go through them real quick. So without further ado, we'll start off with the multicolored cards. We have Emoti, Celebrant of Bounty. It's a five drop Simic Commander for three generic, a green and a blue. It's a legendary creature, Naga Druid. Has three power, one toughness. Says spells you cast with converted mana cost six or greater have cascade. And Emoti himself has cascade. <laughs> Personally, I think this is a really cool card. Um, <clears throat> there's, not whole, there's not a whole lot of commanders that have cascade just blatantly on the card. Uh, and on top of the fact that it gives cascade to other cards cool i think it's a pretty dope card as much as i i think simic has too much <laughs> too much at this point um i do think this is probably one of the cooler ones in my opinion like if i were to make a simic deck heck i might want to make one of these decks if that uh if that makes sense i don't know what it is about uncommons though for some reason it's like a, I, I feel like some of these uncommon uh partner commanders uh, this Emoti's not partner, but I feel like some of these uh, uncommon partner commanders are better than some of the, like the rare or mythic commanders, and it's like okay, but I digress. Anyways, that's it for the multicolored cards. Next up, we have the black cards. There's only three of these. Uh, first up, we have Nadir, Nadir. I don't know. Agent of the Duskinel. It's a six drop black. Uh, Commander, I almost forgot English for a second. It costs five generic mana and one black, so six total. It's a legendary creature, Elf Warrior. Has three power, three toughness. And says, whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on Nadir, Agent of the Duskinel. When Nadir leaves the battlefield, create a number of 1-1 one, one green Elf Warrior creature tokens equal to its power. And it has partner. So this is kind of going along with the theme that we're kind of noticing here. There's quite a good amount of Elf uh, partner commanders in this set so you could very easily kind of mix and match what type of uh elf colors you would like to do and to make a kind of like elf deck so it's a it is worth noting though that this says whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield put one one counter on him uh, so it's not just any creature but tokens in particular uh and i remember there was like a one or two other cards related to when tokens leave the battlefield and stuff so there's you can easily make some sort of uh token matter go wide type strategy deck with this and he would do pretty well um my only reserve is the fact that he's a six drop so it's kind of pricey it kind of makes him uh, a weaker if he was like a four a four drop i think this would have been pretty decent but as a six drop i'm not particularly on board with it but anyways next up for the next black card we have Nadir's Nightblade. It is a three drop black creature for a two generic and a black. It's an elf warrior, one power, three toughness. Uh, and it says whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So again, it going with the token theme, it's also an elf. So it could literally go in the same exact deck. Uh, next card, we have Rakshasa Debaser. This is, this is one of the cooler cards in my opinion. Uh, it costs six mana for four generic and two black. It's a cat demon creature. Has six power, six toughness. So it says six, six for six. And it says whenever Rakasha Debaser attacks, put target creature card from defending player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. <laughs> so pretty cool card. Uh, it's different compared to what you normally see in like a graveyard recursion type uh, card and that it steals opponents creatures in their graveyard um this is the type of card that if i were to make like if i made a mono black deck okay because i don't play black unless it's a mono black deck um if i were to make a a deck with black in it okay i would put this in in one of two decks a either a control deck that has lots of removal in which case i'm probably going to be killing a lot of my opponent's creatures and then turn six or higher whatever bring out rakasha and I can, I can seal some of the creatures that i killed earlier in the game okay the second one would be a mill deck in which case you're really ready milling 
the people who are most likely going to be having a ton of really good creatures. And they can play Rakshasa over here and steal their creatures that you made them mill. Um, those would be one of the two decks that I would probably play this type of card in. Uh, there might be some other ways to break this that I'm just not thinking of right now. But those are the top two off the top of my head. Okay, so that is going to be it for the uh, black cards. We're on to the green cards for today. First up, we have Slurk, all ingesting. It's a six-drop legendary creature, Ooze, or five generic and a green. Uh, zero power, zero toughness, and it says Slurk, all ingesting, enters the battlefield with five plus one plus one counters on it. So it enters as a five-five. Whenever Slurk or another creature you control dies, if it had a one one plus one plus one counter on it, put a plus plus one plus one counter on each creature you control that has a plus one plus one counter on it. So it's a plus one plus one matters type of card. Enters with five counters on it. If Slurk or another creature with counters on it dies, you can give other creatures that have counters on them more counters, essentially. Pretty cool card. Oh, I forgot to mention, it has partner, too. <laughs> so you could kind of mix and match and create some sort of a counters matters type deck if you wanted to. All right. So next green card, we have Reshape the Earth. This is going along the cycle of cards in the uh set so far where each color seems to have their own nine drop sorcery uh this is greens it costs nine mana for six generic and three green it says search your library for up to 10 land cards put them on the battlefield tapped then shuffle your library if you're pay if you already paid nine mana to play this card i'm not really sure why you would want to get this to get 10 more lands it just feels a bit redundant or uh unnecessary at that point if that makes sense so i uh, the only deck that i would possibly see this mattering is in a lands matter deck other than that i feel like at that point the game is probably already close to over or you already have enough mana to do whatever you need to do you probably don't really need to use this in my opinion um but yeah all right next card we have bio waste blob this is a four drop uh mono green creature it's an ooze uh costs two generic and two green has zero power zero toughness and it says oozes you control get plus one plus one so it gives itself plus one plus one weirdly enough uh, and it says at the beginning of your upkeep if you control a commander create a token that's a copy of bio waste blob so this seems to be a lot of uh oozes starting to come out within these last couple years and weirdly enough i kind of like some of the ooze cards in terms of how how they work they seem pretty cool um i was just thinking the other day like you know it once enough support comes out i might kind of want to make an ooze deck uh, just because of how cool the oozes are among the green creature types, in my opinion. Uh, but this is the first time we've actually seen a Lord effect for oozes. So pretty cool. And the fact it gets more of them, too, if you control your commander at your upkeep. That's kind of that's just insane for me. That's disgusting. <laughs> Every time you get a Lord effect, you get no, no. You Oh, my God. It's it's like a scoot scoot swarm where First time you have the ooze, you get a copy. The next time, because you control two oozes, you get two cop two more copies. Next time, since you have four oozes, you get four more copies. It just gets bigger and bigger every turn. Um, gets a little out of hand. So, fun card for sure. All right. Next up, last but not least, we have the only blue card for today called Scholar of the Ages. It is a seven-drop human wizard creature. Uh, for five generic and two blue has three power three toughness and says when scholar of the ages enters the battlefield return up to two target instant or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand i'm just gonna say this right up front it's this is a really bad card don't you shouldn't really put this in your decks there's already uh wizards and cards out there that do exactly what this does but for way cheaper mana um if you need to recur instant sorceries back to your hand there's literally other sorceries for like two, three mana that it can do what this does. So I, I just wouldn't play this card. It's it's really bad. I think they only put this in here for the sake of uh, um, draft purposes or whatnot. But that's it. But other than that, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Again, it was fairly short, I know. 
Uh, go ahead, let me know what your thoughts and opinions are about the cards for today in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Is It League EDH, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, y'all.